Hello, my beautiful CS60 wouldn't be children. I am so excited to talk to you guys about homework five today, and we're going to be learning about guiltwise operations. So just to recap really quick, let's talk about numbering systems. And specifically, let's think about the fundamentals of what a decimal number really means, right? Um, you may not have realized it, but you are very familiar with how decimal numbers work, right? We have these 10 digits, zero through nine. And when we look at a number like this, what's really happening is we see, oh, we've got a zero in the ones place, right? We've got a two in the tens place, a four in the hundreds place, and a one in the thousands place. And so the way this works out is we see this and we know what we have to do is go, oh, that's 1,000 times one plus 100 times four plus two times 10 plus one times zero. In other words, we are adding all this up and we get 1,420 when we add all these terms up. You may not have ever noticed this, but this is the same thing as saying 10 to the zero because anything to the zeroth power is one, right? and then 10 to the one, 10 to the two, 10 to the three. And so this is really how a decimal number breaks down. If you think about it, you probably see these and don't think twice about what this means, but at its core, we are working in base 10 and every um, like spot is basically just 10 to the, like the nth digit is 10 to the n multiplied by the value there at that, of the digit there, right? So this is how a decimal number works. And a binary number is actually totally the same. The only difference is that now we're in base two. And so um, base two just basically means the only digits are zero or one. And unlike before where, um, you know, we were working in multiples of 10 down here or, you know, base 10, we've got two. And so the binary number 1010, if you wanted to think about it in terms of decimal, is really just gonna be the value here multiplied by one, the value here multiplied by two, the value here multiplied by four, and the value here multiplied by eight. In other words, you can think of this as the ones place, twos place, fours place, and eights place. Similarly to how we had ones place, tens place, hundreds place, thousands place. And again, if we take these numbers and sort of look at them in terms of two to some power, it's two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, and two to the three, right? Because two to the three is at eight. And so this is just the same as what we had in the decimal case, but we're working in binary. And so digits must be either zero or one. And so this is how a binary number works. Um, and again, this is, if you wanted to translate this binary number into a decimal number, you could just say, oh, well, it's one times zero plus two times one plus four times zero plus eight times one or 10. And so this binary number is 10. Note that the bits are actually indexed from right to left. And this makes sense because we're going from the least significant to most significant. And so this is these, or sorry, the bits are indexed from right to left. And so this is the zeroth bit, the first bit, the second bit, and the third bit. This might be a little um, unintuitive because in like English, right, everything goes from left to right. But when we're talking about bits, it actually makes sense to go from least significant to most significant. And a bit is just the smallest unit of data we can talk about, right? It's the smallest unit of like memory or computing that really is like tangible. And a single binary number takes up one bit. It's either zero or one, but regardless, the memory or like the unit of like data it takes to store it, whether it's zero or one is one bit. A Java int is 32 bits, for example, a long is 64, a character is 16. And all of these different data types takes a different number of memory to represent um, or amount of memory, depending on how complex or large they are and how much detail we need. And I wanna point out something important, which um, maybe seems intuitive, maybe not, but keep in mind it takes as much um like storage or memory to store the number zero is if it's an integer and to store the integer like i don't know 2432 right these take up the same amount of memory because at the end of the day one int must be 32 bits it just happens to be that for zero all those 32 bits are like zero right and for this it's much more um or there's more 
like non-zero bits, but they both take 32 bits to store. And this is because that's just how an int is defined. Um, and we have to sort of keep them uniform. We can't say that like an integer that stores a smaller number is smaller because it would just be a huge mess. So we keep them all the same. And so this is how um, basically like bits work, right? And we're gonna talk a little bit about bit twiddling, which you've already seen in lecture. So even though you might write your code like so, right? Int x equals one, under the hood, the value stored within x is actually gonna be represented as the following sequence of bits, right? One, and then a bunch of zeros. And so Java provides us with bit twiddling or bitwise operations that let us operate on the underlying bits rather than just the decimal number representation. And so if we wanted to work with X and say, oh, I wanna flip all the bits or I wanna change the, I don't know, the second bit to be some other value, Java lets us do that using bit twiddling. And so if you don't recall this slide from lecture, these are the operations that you can use um, for bit twiddling. And I would really recommend watching the lecture again, honestly, if you're unfamiliar with any of these, but basically mask goes through and says, or it's basically saying and, right? If for every value, if both of them are one, then I will return one, right? Since so this one, we're going like down like column wise, right? And we say, oh, these two are both one, it's one. And here, like they're not both one, right? And so this is zero. That's how mask works. Set is kind of like or. It's saying if either one of them, at least one of them is one, I will be one. And so in this case, um, the bottom number is one. So this is a one. In this case, they're both zero, so it's a zero. And in this case, since either one of them it happens to be both is one, it's a one, right? So set is saying like, as long as one of them is true, it's true. It's similar to the Boolean or. Then we have this flip. You can also think of it as sort of, um, they must be different. And so here, one zero one's one, so it's like one here. Whereas in both of these columns, they're both the same, right? It's zero, zero and one, one. So these actually turn out as zero. And so flip is looking for difference. And then flip all, or this like little tilde, um, basically you, it only works on a single number and it's just gonna like negate every bit or give the opposite of what was there. We can also shift. And so um, you specify like the amount you want to shift by, right? And so here, if you shifted by three, you're bringing in um, three zeros and pulling everything. Like you can recognize this sequence is the same as that sequence. And then we also have right shifts and note for the right shifts, we have both arithmetic and logical, right? Arithmetic fills the extra space it brings in with ones and logical fills that extra space with zeros. So these are the bit operations. Again, I really recommend watching lecture again if you're confused. And your first task is to basically just do some bit exercises. You're gonna achieve a few various like mathematical goals using only bit twiddling and you should complete at least two out of the three. These are pretty much just little puzzles. We've given you some tests already, but as always you're encouraged to write more. Alongside this, I'm not already written on the slide, there is this grade scope assignment that is also a mandatory part of homework five. It's 0.75 out of the two points available for this assignment. So, you know, it's pretty significant and it's gonna be unlimited attempts. You'll be able to like see whether your answers were correct, but I really encourage you to put in your best effort and try to do these and understand them because the only way you can really get good at bit twiddling is practice and bit twiddling is 100% in scope for your next exam so you will be very very upset if the exam comes along and you don't know how to do it so I recommend um, putting in your best effort for both the bit exercises and the grade scope assignment the second task which is maybe a little bit more significant is the programming task nibbles and so here our goal with this task is we want to store an array of nibbles or four bit numbers. So a nibble just means four bit. This is much smaller than the primitive number types we're used to working with, right? For example, one of the primitives we know very well is int, that's 32 bits. Even the smallest number type the Java supports is a byte, which is eight bits. And so that's too many for what we want, right? So the question is, how can we store an array of nibbles when Java doesn't actually have a primitive nibble data type? 
So I encourage you to pause the video real quick, think about it maybe. And we can come up with our first sort of naive idea. So we'll just say, oh, we'll just use like an integer array or something and we'll fill all the unused space with zeros. So for example, if we wanted to sort the nibbles, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 0, 0, 0, 1, we could do the following in an int array. And so we would just put the nibble as the least significant bit of the int, fill the rest with zeros, and then put this in an int array. And so notice this is one 32-bit int here, another 32-bit here, and we have basically four ints in this int array, right? And the nibble that we want is just going to be the four least significant bytes or bits. Sorry, I keep saying bytes. I mean bit. Um, and so uh, maybe we see a problem with this, which is that we are being very wasteful. And, you know, we really believe in this zero waste 2020. I guess it's 2021 now. We believe in, you know, not being wasteful, right? And so how can we make this more efficient, right? We're spending all this space on just storing zeros. And so you realize we can just pack the nibbles in. All four of these nibbles can actually fit into one integer, right? We can put them in right here. And in fact, we can fit eight nibbles in an integer, right? We have even more extra space. This makes sense because an int is 32 bits, a nibble is four bits. And so 32 divided by four is eight. So we can fit four nibbles in one int. Or in other words, if our int array is of length n, then we can actually store within there n times eight nibbles, right? An int array with n ints can be n times eight nibbles. And so a user of the nibbles class might say, oh, hey, I have um, these awesome 16 nibbles. I'm going to put them in an array. And to the user, they can say, oh, can I get the zeroth nibble? Can I get the first nibble? Can I get the second whatever? Can I get the, um, sorry. Um, okay, and so the nibble, the user will say, can I get the eighth nibble? And you, as the programmer, are actually under the hood going, or I guess it's not you as the programmer, but the code you write as the program will go and say, oh, sure, I'll get you that eighth nibble. It's right here. And if you say, can I get the zeroth nibble? They go, ah, oh, sure, it's right here. And so the user has this abstraction or this view of the data as this like regular old array with regular old indices. But what you're actually doing is you are putting these nibbles into an integer array where eight nibbles can fit in one integer. And so to store a 16 nibble array, all you need is 16 divided by two or sorry, 16 divided by eight or length two int array, right? And so I want to point out something really important, which is that notice how within the block or within one integer, we are going from right to left because the zeroth nibble or the like least significant nibble should go at the zeroth or least significant um, nibble within the int, right? And so like we said earlier, when we are talking about like within a number, the least significant is the thing to the right. And so here the zeroth nibble is the thing to the right. The um, first nibble is gonna be second to the right, right? And that corresponds to this. And so we have this, correspondence. And if the user were to say, can I get the eighth or ninth nibble? You would have to go, oh, sure. Well, the eighth nibble is actually going to be in index one and oh, it's right here. And the ninth is here, etc. And so you have this underlying array named data and you have to figure out how can I be smart and operate on the bits within to get the correct bits, whatever you, the user selects. And so this will require you to use those bit twiddling operations we've talked about earlier. I do want to point out that it's easier to sort of think about things in sort of these like groups of four binary numbers, right? At least for me, that's how I like to think about it. 
but maybe you, for whatever reason, like to convert all of these into like um, decimal, and you can think about it that way. Or we can even point out that this all together, if you were to like look at it um, in the debugger, or like just look at the number, this binary number actually corresponds to this and this decimal number. And that's using that same like method of um, translation we found earlier, right? You're just going through and adding all the values appropriately. Or more realistically, you look up online binary to decimal converter and you can get those. But I just wanna point out that um, like, this is how it might actually look. But what you are really working with deep down are these bits and that's what you wanna be operating on. And so that is your programming task. Um, I really hope you have fun. It's a tricky little like sort of, it's, it's a fun little exercise, right? You're figuring out how to take this given tool and make it into something really efficient or storage efficient and use it for a totally different purpose. And so I hope that you have fun with homework five. Um, have a great day and great week and great year. Um, and keep being you because because you're a six twin B student and that makes you awesome and also a person and uh, yeah have a good day <laughs>